Tonight is the season finale of the 10th season of the scoreboard show. On this week's show, we are football heavy as we take a look back to this past Saturday's football action along with games played tonight. But it is not just all about football as we head out to state soccer competition as well. It is all coming up on this week's The Scoreboard Show. <laughs> Presentation of Scoreboard Show. Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Nextech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Nextech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Browns in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to our season finale. I'm your host, Troy Waymaster. Tonight, there are 22 football games taking place with two others that were moved to Saturday. Let's take a minute and take a look at some of the scores from tonight's football action. As we have done throughout we'll be posting the scores on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. Also on our website, you'll find all the highlights from throughout the season with all the episodes in their entirety. Now, before Casey gets in with all the football action, let's head back to last Saturday as state soccer wrapped up. We head to the 5A state championship, which was held at the Hummer Sports Complex in Topeka. The Liberal Redskins made it back into the championship game to defend their 2011 state championship. Standing between them and back-to-back -back state championships, it was Bishop Miege. Both teams would take their attempts, but it was Bishop Miege who would get on the board first as Colin Emberlin gets a shot and knocks it in for the goal with 12-16 to play in the first period. Liberal would try to rebound, but right before the half, Bishop Miege would increase their lead to 2-0. In the second period, Liberal knew what they had to do to get the championship. However, they took several shots on goal, but could not get past the Bishop Miege goalie. Then Colin Novick would capitalize to bring their lead up to three as he knocked it in for the goal with 29.04 left to play in regulation. Less than three minutes later, Liberal would come answering back with their own goal to close the gap two to one. Liberal continued to push on with their heads up while taking shots on goal along with stopping Bishop Miege's shots. In the end though, it was Bishop Miege holding on to their lead to get the win two to one and the 5A state championship. Liberal is awarded the second place trophy with their heads up from a tough fought contest. Congratulations. So 
In other classifications of state soccer, first was 6A. It was Washburn Rural taking first by defeating Wichita Northwest. Then in the 4-3-2-1A bracket, it was Topeka Hayden taking first with a win over T Tonganoxie. In the third and fourth game, McPherson fell to Kansas City Christian after several overtime periods and then going into a shootout. Congratulations to all the teams that advanced on to state competition. And that wraps up all the sports except football. And we'll take a short break and then Case will be in to take us back to this past Saturday football games, which leads up to tonight's action. Don't go away. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Cardinal T-shirts, providing direct-to-garment printing with no design or setup fees. No minimums required. Also offering embroidery services for hats, shirts, and jackets. Cardinal T-shirts, located at 821 North Main Street, Hoisington, inside Cardinal Pharmacy. And welcome to the football half of the scoreboard show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Casey McAvoy, and we have your second round of high school football playoff highlights from last Saturday and tonight coming right up. Some games were close and others like Ness City, well, it took them longer to drive to Pretty Prairie than it did to seal a victory. We'll be right back. Football action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. Andell at McPherson, Andell's Jared Smarsh rolls out far right, throws it up on the run for Hunter Noblock, and he's out, ran the secondary, and will get the score. Conversion here, Tyler Bugner across the middle, and that's two more. McPherson answers back with this throw to Keaton Sorensen, touchdown. Sorensen has seven catches for 194 yards and another touchdown on the night. Smarsh throws it up in the corner and Ben Sealer, no problems catching this one for six points. Sealer would have another touchdown grab on the night. Kyler Kinneman gives to Austin O'Bannon, hitting the sideline, getting in the secondary, past the 30-yard line, and Jake Grand finally trips him up. How about some more of that Swift 24? He gets 15 plus yards on that carry. He had 194 yards on the ground, three scores on the night. One right here, O'Bannon, touchdown. Points after, throw it up, Keaton Sorensen, it's good. More McPherson, more O'Bannon, and we'll go 10. Oh, how about another 20 yards on the ground and looking for contact as Tyler Bugner stops him at the 10. He gets inside the five though. Smarsh hooks up with no block down the middle. No black at 112 yards in the air with one score. McPherson recovers a fumble there. Shotgun, O'Bannon gets a handoff a few yards outside and Jake May forces him out of bounds. Going back to the air and Kinneman is picked off by Smarsh and he will take the pick. And now he's gonna throw another touchdown to Ben Sealer. Kickoff is a squibber. And uh-oh, he's dangerous on the ground and after going one way and cutting it back, O'Bannon makes a nice return. McPherson goes on top 42 to 36 and played Holton tonight. In Crusader territory at Bueller as they face Concordia. Give to Trevor Nordell by Nathan Gieber. A few yards on the pickup and a nice open field tackle by Dalton Stoss. Nick Thomas gets the handoff. Good gain on the play. A couple Crusaders split the tackle. Nordell takes it outside, stopped in the backfield. Bueller offense, Joe Schmidt open 15 yards downfield, forced out of bounds. Luke Bermlinger under center, rolls to his left and hits Brandon Keeler down the far sideline near first and goal territory. Timeout, Concordia. Burblinger looks for the quick throw over the middle, but Brenton Hake has a heads up on this one, tips the pass and nearly catches his own tip. 
Field goal try for Caden McElhaney. It's up and it's good from 28 yards out. Nordell, who had 109 yards on the ground, gets five here. Stoss makes the stop. Gieber out of the pocket, running left, finds Braden Johnson on the sideline for the completion. Gieber takes this one far side for a good pickup before Josh Gertzen brings him down from behind. Gertzen had three solo tackles on the night. Bueller goes on top 45-14 and travel to Mulvane. The crowd gearing up for Holcomb at Beloit. Beloit's Peyton Vetter sweeps it to the right, picks up 10 plus yards for a first down. Now we go toss to Bo Bamer. He'll get a few yards, but Blake Richmar is there to stuff the hole and force him back. Toss far side again to Bamer. More than a first. It's now first and goal for Beloit. Richmar again on the tackle. Stanton Crone gets the give and goes easy and untouched up the middle for the Trojan touchdown. Little fans and little smiles, but a fan nonetheless. The toss to Crone just gets off before the quarterback gets laid out, and that will be another first down run for 22. Heath Tucker on the tackle. Bamer goes far side, and that's a good run for the first before Richmeyer makes the stop. Tyler LaSalle scrambles right and throws it up for Jeremy Cox, and that's a first down. Dan Perez on coverage. Back to pass again, but this time LaSalle is picked off by Austin Budke. And not just a pick, it's a pick six for Beloit. Beloit on offense, misdirection pass to Bamer, and he stopped at the 20 by Richmeyer, who's all over the field in this game. With the pile to fit through at the goal line, Beloit punches it in for the score. LaSalle options to Aaron Hernandez, but Crone reads it all the way for the lack of option tackle. And the great tackler becomes the runner, and Crone picks up a little chunk there, then finishes off the drive on third and goal and gets the touchdown. Beloit goes on top easily 60-8 to and played at Sedgwick tonight. Scott Community at Salina Sacred Heart. Nick Wuth now drops back. Plenty of time uh, to be picked off in the end zone by Brett O'Neill. But now his pass intercepted in the end zone. Scott's Trey O'Neill rolls out left and nobody's open. So he's going to high step this one in himself. Touchdown Beavers. Wolf now avoids the first sack, but not the second as Warren Crop gets what every D lineman wants. Toss to Tias Price, spinning to the left, past the secondary and in the end zone. With now to pass. But Drew Kite's area bats it down. Fourth and a few. Dalton Bueller's day off to the races. And on fourth down, it's a touchdown. With now drops back, rolls left and just gets it to, looks like Josh Dolan on the sideline for a gain of 15. Brenner Wells on the coverage. Britt Mayer drops way, way back and way, way down the field as Kite for the reception and touchdown for Scott Community. Do it now, with now throws it down the far sideline to Tony Chavez. Nice catch, kid. We're in shotgun, lots of time. Woof now going to find Tate Richards across the middle and Scott Community takes a big W, 55 to seven. Played tonight against the winner of this game, Garden Plain at Conway, Denver Doyle with a good pickup up the middle. Travis Wood on the tackle. Dylan Clark on the reverse, not much there. Wood contains and comes back for the tackle. Is it a mishandled toss? If you thought it was, that was the plan. Nick Shoemaker comes across the middle and gets the score on a 15 yard pass play. More Garden playing deep pass to the corner of the end zone. Doyle has the grab and the touchdown. And the crowd goes wild. Conway Springs looking for an answer. It's 14 Tanner Wood on the carry for a short game. Wood again going outside, picking up little chunks at a time. Five's going to get the handoff, losing his feet and going right down. 
It's an O-line shift. Ball is going to go to the weak side and not much there. Travis Simon on the tackle. Garden plane ball, Doyle hard nose running up the gut and Wood trips him up. Caleb Arnold will run the option and keep it. Positive yardage up front and brought down by Ryan Pauley. Doyle is open on the far side and makes a move. Makes another man miss going down the sideline and looks to have the touchdown. It is so. Doyle had 25 carries for 205 yards, two scores on the night. Final score of this one, 33 to 28. Garden playing on top. Otis Bison hosting Thunder Ridge. And we have Trevor Lowe on a third down carry. Picks up a few Dylan Wisman. Looks like Jordan Hoffman also on the tackle. This is just an easy give up the middle and someone missed because Lowe goes nearly untouched for the Longhorn score from 26 yards out. More Thunder Ridge, low, few yards here, and 33 arranges his body on the tackle. Here we go, Otis Bison, Cole Urban, or here we go, nowhere, as all we can see is a gang tackle of white jerseys. But one option later, Wisman has a first down for Otis Bison. And then another option later, Urban keeps it and count it. Six for the Cougars from 26 yard out and a few missed tackles later. The blue running far side fumble, and it's recovered by Thunder Ridge. Gare Kruger on the keeper, up the middle, and just tripped up before he breaks it big. Greg Yoxel going far side, and a first down pickup, and more outside at the 20. Trent Reitsky gets the toss here, and gets the Longhorns inside the 10. Thunder Ridge looking to score. Kruger hits Dalton Miner as he falls down while making the catch. Touchdown Longhor Longhorns from five yards out. Thunder Ridge will host Wallace County on Saturday. Nest City at Pretty Prairie. Nothing pretty about this game for the Bulldogs as they face number four nationally ranked Nest City Eagles. Dalton Gantz gets the handoff running 20 yards to get 10 forward. That's a Nest City touchdown. Gantz had 101 yards on 11 carries, three scores on the night. Pretty Prairie offense, nothing going with McVicker and Von Ley on the assist tackle. Go play action. Ratliff throws it up. Trevor Hawkins tips it into his own hands, and Nest City is near first and goal. On second down, it goes to Gantz, and it goes for six from 10 yards out. And here's one thing pretty. That's a diving catch by Mark Schnicker from Alex Mains. We got Pedro Flores going near side. Good pickup. Justin Halflick on the tackle. Mains, no way to go. We'll keep it and get a good chunk here before Garrett Flax shows you how to wrap up in the open field. A 23 and nine connection again. Schnitger has a first down. Nest City's defense led by Frusher and McVicker swarm the outside for the stop. Ratliff rolls to his left and has Gantz across the middle for a good game for the Nest City Eagles. Not much happened on the outside toss to Flax, but here we go now up the middle and Flax is in. Nest City hosts the winner of this next game. And that being Hoko Horns in Solomon Gorilla Country. Hodgman kicks in Solomon 7. Colt, Colton Chirac gets a nice return up the middle, making special teams look way too easy. Jared Borger has nowhere to go but sacked by Dan Durant. Shurok and Shotgun, and Hoko has a defense too, and his name is Zach Chu on the sack. Shurok drops and rolls right, finding Josh Burdine coming across out at the 30. Shurok pulls this one in for himself and will get the Gorillas into first and goal territory. Mason DeMars bringing it near side and hit twice, once by Borger and then Chu to get him out of bounds. Schrock looks to go up the middle, but cuts it outside and scores from five yards out on third down. 
Here comes the conversion, and Chirac dives in for two more. Berger back. Blaine Nelson applying the pressure, but he gets it off, and Kevin Clark gets the interception at the 25-yard line. And we've seen this play before. Chirac rolls right and repeats it to Burdine. It's Longhorn's ball now. Borger airs this one out for Colton Washburn. He makes the catch, is nearly stopped, but dives across the goal line for the touchdown. This give is to DeMars going far side. Coates gets the tackle, and DeMars is up and then down again. Not sure what happened there. Borger down the middle to Alex Krager on third and long. They get some yards back. But back to Solomon we go, and Chirac wants to pass. Burdine is open downfield. He puts on the wheels and gets six for Solomon. They have a tough road ahead against Nest City. Smoky Hills Public Television Scoreboard Show and the KCAC have teamed up together for the Game of the Week. This week's Game of the Week is Friends University at Tabor College. The Game of the Week kicks off at 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, and you can catch the action on our website, scoreboardshow.tv. Now let's stick with the action and get to the next round of these previous games with Emporia and Salina, Mead and Sterling, Garden Plain and Scott Community, Oakley and La Crosse, and Solomon versus Ness City right now. We have the battle of the undefeateds with Garden Plain at Scott Community, and it's hard to win a game when you commit turnovers, and Denver Doyle, who is a 1,000-yard rusher this season, coughs it up. One of seven turnovers on the night for the Owls. Tyler Hess coming left side, picking up about 20 yards for the 195-pounder. Brett O'Neill scrambles right, looking for the open man. He goes cross body with that, throwing, finding Troy O'Neill for the Beaver touchdown. Push up for points. We've got Caleb Arnold looking to throw, and he finds Trey O'Neill for the wrong team. And that was one of five interceptions on the too many turnovers night for the Garden Plain. Dalton Bueller run for 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns this season, make that 21. Arnold to pass, and this was the story of the night for Garden Plain. Brett O'Neill gets the pick. O'Neill with the interception, now playing quarterback, hits Bueller in the flat. One guy misses, two guys miss, and that run makes it 27-0 with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Scott Community takes this one 49-0. Two 9-1 teams are the Salina South Cougars hosting the Emporia Spartans. Justin Stonebreaker running the offense. Cody Boosby, quick kid, he brings it near side, gets 30 plus yards before Emporia's number seven knocks him out. Cameron Weishauer punts it into Emporia special teams. Number seven gets a block, 11 sweeps it up, and will take it home for a Spartan touchdown. Stonebreaker drops back, airs it up, and Zach Nackbar is past the secondary, will not be caught. That's a Cougar touchdown. Stonebreaker near side on the keeper for a good gain. Give to Mike Jones here. He goes for a solid 15 yards. Stonebreaker breaking that Spartan line and hammering it home for a Cougar touchdown as the line of South takes this one 35 to 20. Now we go to 9-1 Meade at 4-6 Sterling, and with win in his hair, Trevor Wines takes this one almost the full length of the field and scores from straight up the gut. And let's rewind that play because here he comes again. Trevin goes a long distance for another Buffalo 6, saying what's up to the crowd in the meantime. Jet Littles open in the flat, will take this one to the 40 for a first down. Now we go to Sterling and Riley Ganning goes right side, short pickup. Gannon to throw, but Mike Finster is right there to pick him off and get meat in the red zone as they take this one 32 to 14 over Sterling. Lacrosse is Levi Morris has apparently shrunk in size and here come the 9-0 Lacrosse Leopards ready to stick it to Oakley, sitting at seven and two. And that's Darius Hole rolling right, and Morris got his size back and gets this interception in the end zone. 
Here we have Garcia. He gives to Morse, and 25 yards later, he's forced out of bounds. Garcia, play action. He has Kip Keeley, and Keeley won't go down, and that's a first down for lacrosse. Where's Morse? Uh, he's running far side, and 40 yards later, Morse is in for the touchdown. How'd you like that, James Sloan? Lacrosse takes this one 20 to 8. The toughness City Eagles, Tucker Von Leahy leading the Eagles against the Solomon Gorillas. Ness City is ranked number four in the nation in eight man division ones and their opponents are only averaging 5.6 points per game, folks. And that's because of teamwork and sufficient tackling. Justin Bernine punts, Garrett Flax is back for the return, and he'll get the ball into Solomon territory. More Flax coming near side, and boom! Bird my laser hit, and Flax and Smoky Hill's very own Rodrigo fill the horse Force behind the Solomon defense, who should get five points for laying out the cameraman. And Flax goes up the middle and over the goal line for the Eagle touchdown. Ratliff rolls out and Trevor Hawkins is right where he's supposed to be. He makes the catch and gets six. Ratliff will keep this one, pick up a few, and Andrew Meager and Dan Durant get the tackle. Ness City continues to roll. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, the 10th season is now in the books. And after tomorrow's two football games, the eight-man state football championship games will be set. Smoky Hills Public Television will be taping the games for broadcast with the Division I airing on Wednesday, November 21st at 7 p.m. and Division II on Thanksgiving Day at 7 p.m. as well. Both games will also replay on Saturday, November 24th, starting at 2 p.m. Something new this year, Smoky Hills will also be taping the 2-1A State Football Championship will be broadcasted on December 5th at 7 p.m. So we'll be bringing you the action from the 2-1A and the 8-man championship. So I sign off this year reminding you to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attention of our cameras and we just might see you at one of the state football championships. Remember everyone here at Smoky Hills Public Television, see you next year.